Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing The Hunger of the Gods, book two of the Blood Sworn trilogy by John Gwynn. This review will be spoiler free for The Hunger of the Gods. However, I will be making references to The Shadow of the Gods, book one of the Blood Sworn trilogy that could be considered vaguely spoilery, so be warned. I, first of all, want to say that I had a fantastic time reading The Hunger of the Gods. I expected to have a great time, and I am pleased to say that I did. John Gwynn, of course he came through on the action. That almost goes without saying this is a John Gwynn book, and it is action-packed. But also there were some very powerful moments that he really did a fantastic job of building up to. And this is really great character work that he's done here. I am more and more convinced that with every book, John Gwynn is getting better and better and better. I think he's done a fantastic job of developing his characters here. And there's also some really well-crafted prose. I was very impressed. The opening of this book, of The Hunger of the Gods, just blew me away. I thought, wow, this is really fantastic writing. And he reached those heights at various moments throughout the book. I've always thought of Gwyn's prose as being accessible, but also very well crafted. But this one, just I, there were moments here that I was kind of like, wow, I got to read that again. That was really good. Uh, so yeah, there were lots of those uh, just beautiful sentences in whole chunks of the book that I thought, wow, uh, just amazing stuff. And also there were some surprises. He surprised me in moments, you know, I thought I knew what was going to happen sometimes and I didn't. So, um, and of course, I think most of all, the thing that I've come to expect from a John Gwynn book is a whole lot of heart. And it's interesting because I love this Bloodsworn trilogy so far because of the, the, Icelandic saga-like vibe that he's achieved here. He's clearly very inspired, obviously, by the Old Norse material. And he absolutely wears it on his sleeve. I mean, or on his chainmail, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway, it's just, it's there. And he really does a fantastic job of replicating that tone. It's a very grim, a very, very gray world. But at the same time, it's John Gwynn. So there's just a whole lot of heart to every book he writes and he I, I just something that's I think very distinguishing about his books that uh and they that's one of the reasons why they have this traditional fantasy feel to them I think because of that heart and I think a lot of it is he does so well with things like the found family trope. He really does a wonderful job of pulling on the emotions. Uh, making you feel, along with the character, this sense of new belonging in a world that can be very harsh and unforgiving and constantly reminding you that you don't belong. So it's a really powerful thing that he taps into extremely effectively. And I found that to be the case once again in The Hunger of the Gods, I'm delighted to say. So it's great stuff. I was more and more invested in the characters in book two. Uh, I loved the characters. I was impressed by them in The Shadow of the Gods. And in book two, I felt like a deeper sense of connection to them through their interactions with the other characters, through the bonds that they were forming with one another in this found family trope and in other circumstances as well. Uh, so I would lo I'm just, I love how Gwyn has mastered the quieter moments. You know, I, looking back at some of his first books, like Malice, a fantastic book in many ways, but it was a lot of action, action, action. And now I feel like he is a master of the quieter moments as well. Not that there weren't a lot of uh, amazing action-packed scenes. In fact, the last 150 pages or so of The Hunger of the Gods just flew by about as fast as any book has ever gone for me. So it was just really obviously edge of my seat kind of thing. Just page, just turn the pages, trying to see what's going to happen. So uh, he's, he did a great job of uh, building me up to that point. So great stuff. Uh, just to, to comment a little more on those characters, uh, let's talk about some of the, uh, the main ones. If you read The Shadow of the Gods, you know that the three POVs are Orca, Varg, and Elvar. And I really had a fantastic time uh, reading about their continuing adventures, 
Orca being just this uh, incredible warrior, but also a mother. And those two things kind of sit within her and, and, and form this amazing stoic character uh, who you, you can't help but feel for. Uh, someone who has felt some very painful loss, um, who is uh, wrestling with her own inner conflicts, uh, her, the, the trauma of her past. And of course, her relentless pursuit in the present. Uh, she's just a really beautifully realized, iconic character from this trilogy that I think people are going to be talking about for a very long time. Varg. I love this character as well. I talked about the found family trope, and he is really the, the exhibit A here in uh, the, the Bloodsworn trilogy. Uh, Varg is coming into his own as well, and it's, it's fantastic to see how he is making friends and how this is such a, uh, a touching thing for someone who's re led such a difficult life up to this point to find that family, to find those, those people that he can call his own, and to fight for them. Uh, is just, it's really a moving thing to witness. And then, of course, Elvar, who is, uh, I, I think of her as a, as a younger person trying to find her way in the world, trying to prove herself to the world around her. And often, when we're young, uh, it's our, our parents that we're trying to prove ourselves to as well. And that's an interesting dynamic going in her arc. Um, so, uh, and, and she also has a found family of sorts uh, among her war band, the Battlegrim, whereas Varg is off with the Bloodsworn. So, and that's a great thing too. Uh, each of these POVs uh, is supported in their threads by some great uh, secondary or supporting characters. Uh, the Bloodsworn as a group, their distinctive personalities were really coming out here in The Hunger of the Gods. I really enjoyed that a lot. And uh, I also enjoyed the fact that I didn't know if uh, there were there were moments when some of them, you know, it's Gwyn again, so he is not afraid to kill off a character that might might be starting to like a lot. So <laughs> you have to be ready for that sort of thing. And of course, the Battlegrim as well, and then obviously the Raven Feeders too, because uh, there are some new POVs that give us insight insights into the baddies in here, and, and just as in he, he did in, uh, I think it's fair to say, in The Faithful and the Fallen, and in A Blood and Bone, Gwyn is starting to give us a little more complexity to the villains here as well. So I really appreciated that, uh, getting their perspective and thinking, oh, okay, maybe they do have something here. Uh, they do have a, a reason, at least, for the way they are. Uh, don't forget, this is a world where there's been a lot of oppression, there's been a lot of exploitation. Uh, of various kinds and a lot of vengeance uh, and these kind of blood feuds are uh, can be um, all consuming. Also, I want to say that uh, another thing that Gwyn does beautifully is, of course, animal companions. And this is a world, though, where a lot of the characters, uh, the division between them and the animals is non-existent because of the magic system we have here is beast-based magic. Uh, so. Gwyn, what does he do? He finds a way to bring in those animal companions. And I really loved uh, the role that Spurt and Vesley play in here. Uh, the rogue Vison, if you will. Uh, so that was a lot of fun as well. Gwyn really does the animal companions. And of course, the, the bad part of that is you're, you, you're scared that the animal companions are going to bite it. <laughs> so uh, that's just uh, a par for the course when you're reading a Gwyn book, I guess. I'm also really enjoying the very quirky humor that you find in here, something that I'm used to, uh, having read all of uh, John Gwynn's other books and I've, I've been enjoying, actually. And it must be said that occasionally it can be rather cheesy. I'm looking at you, Svik. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It, 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 it makes the, uh, the otherwise very grim story uh, a bit more lighthearted at times, and I did enjoy that. Uh, so it's a little goofy, uh, but I have totally embraced it and uh, enjoy it very much. Um, and of course, I love the tributes to the sagas and the Nordic lore. And, and Gwyn also kind of goes his own way with that. Yes, it, I mean, the nods are obvious. The, the inspiration is there to see. But he does his own thing with it as well. And I enjoyed his particular spin on it here, getting to know more about the gods and the lore 
and the ancient battles and rivalries that have uh, spelled the gods' demise in the past and have led to the events of the present. And of course, I also have to say, this is a Gwyn book again, so uh, I really enjoyed myself uh, reading about the weapons and the, the kit, the gear, and all the maintenance involved in that, and how like heavy a shield can feel when you're marching or using it in battle and that sort of thing. So Gwyn's Viking reenactment experience really comes through here, and it lends the book an authenticity that I loved. Uh, in spite of the fact that he's, he's very fantastical as well. Gwyn just goes for it with some of the, the fantasy elements in here. But the, uh, he grounds it in our world very well with an intricate knowledge of weapon craft. It's like how chainmail feels as you're wearing it and how you get used to it and that sort of thing. So really great stuff. Uh, I just, I have to say this is an excellent continuation of the Bloodsworn trilogy, the saga that is uh, Gwyn's modern uh, tribute to Old Norse. And I love the fact that there are Old Norse words. He uses the, the magic in there is uh, associated with actual Icelandic. Uh, so that is a lot of fun as well. And I am entirely eager for book three of the Bloodsworn trilogy. Uh, if you loved The Shadow of the Gods, in short, you're going to absolutely love The Hunger of the Gods. I am confident of that. And thanks so much for watching this. Until next time.